what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new mini PC from ASRock known as the 4x4 Box 7735U. This is powered by Ryzen 7000 and I actually haven't had a chance to test this chip out. We've taken a look at the HS variant but we're working with a U variant here so I'm really interested to see how this thing performs. Now in the past, we've actually taken a look at a lot of their industrial mini PCs, kind of using the same form factor here. They don't run at higher wattages like other mini PCs we've seen on the market, but with all of the tweaking and tuning they've done from the BIOS profiles, we've been able to get some really great performance out of them. And this one's no different because I've already done a little bit of game testing with this and I can tell you right now that this is the best performing Ryzen 7000 series mini PC that we've seen so far when it comes to gaming. Inside of the box, obviously, we're going to get the 4x4 mini PC from ASRock Industrial. It also comes with a VESA mount, a 120 watt power supply, and some hardware for the VESA mount. Plus, we can add a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom of this tiny PC. Now, before we go any further with the video, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Jumping right back into it, when it comes to I.O., up front here we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, this is a full size Type A, and two USB 4 ports. This will support Display 1.4. Moving around back, we've got two USB 2.0 ports full-size HDMI 2.1, and a full-size DisplayPort 1.4. So in total, we can actually do four displays out of this tiny PC. Plus, we've got two Ethernet ports, a single gig LAN port, and a 2.5 gigabit LAN port. Taking a look at the internals, this one came to me bare bones, so I do need to add RAM and storage. This supports SODIMM DDR5. We can go up to 64 gigs at 4800 megahertz, for this, I'm going to be adding 16 gigabytes at 4800, plus a one terabyte NVMe SSD. And when it comes to the specs of this new ASRock mini PC, for the CPU, we've got the AMD Ryzen 7 7735U. This is a non-HS variant. It is based on Zen 3 Plus. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 2.7 GHz with a boost up to 4.75. Radeon 680M graphics based on RDNA 2 with 12 compute units at 2200 MHz. This PC supports up to 64GB of SODIMM DDR5 running at 4800 MHz. We've got one PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD slot inside. We can also add a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom. We've got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth. Plus, we've got that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on the back. And I'm going to be running Windows 11 Pro on this PC. But with these ASRock mini PCs, the best practice is to actually head into the BIOS and turn on performance mode. Okay, first things first, with these ASRock mini PCs, what you want to do is head into the BIOS. Now, if you're looking to get the maximum performance out of this, this is exactly what you need to do. We're going to head to the advanced section. Under CPU configuration, we want to set this to performance mode. What this is going to do is up that TDP. And I'll tell you right now that these aren't going to run at a super high TDP like other mini PCs with these Ryzen chips that I've seen. But the ASRock devs have done a lot of tuning for these power profiles. And, you know, at these lower wattages, these are some of the best performing chips or mini PCs that I've seen. Now, with other PCs, we can definitely up the wattage a little higher and equal this kind of performance. But uh, I really do like what they've done here. Not a ton of tweaking that we can do, but uh, we can also change this fan profile here. Automatic mode, manual, or full on. I'm going to leave it at automatic. Once you have it set to performance, you want to save changes and exit. Okay, so we've got everything set up from the BIOS. We're in performance mode. And I was actually really interested to see what kind of TDP this was running at now that we're in performance mode. And you got to keep in mind that this is actually the 7735U. It's the non-HS variant, so it will run at a lower wattage. But I've got core temp up here. 
We've got our wattage listed right here, so our power draw. If I run a quick stress test, 50 watts, and okay, so it drops down to around 42 after that initial 50 watt burst. We could definitely use a third party app to up this TDP, but I'm going to leave it just like this because, you know, the cooling system that's built in here is still pretty quiet, even at uh, 42 watts. It's getting up there, but I don't think we're going to hit thermal throttle while gaming or anything like that. But overall, it's been a really snappy system. Uh, browsing the web, not an issue here. We'll head over to ASRock Industrial. And they've actually released some really awesome stuff. This 7020E is something I actually wanted to get my hands on. It's got a lower end chip in it. But if we check out the fan embedded box PCs, you can see they've got the new 13th gen for Intel. And with this box here, we're actually working with that 7735U. They also offer the uh, 7535U. Feels like a really quick little system here. Let's head over to YouTube and check out some 4K video playback. I don't think we're gonna have much of an issue here couple drop frames on that initial load in but this is something you'd never notice if you didn't have that frame counter on looking really good here and I definitely expected this I mean we've got a new 7000 series chip here if we couldn't do 4k 60 I mean really what's the point the older chips did it quite well also All right, so first up, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales. We're at 720p low settings, and the built-in IGTI scaler is set to balance. I've got V-Sync on. That gives us a nice stable frame rate here, and we can run this game at 60. I mean, for the wattage here, not bad, but I really wanted to see if we could actually take this up to 1080p, because with V-Sync off, we're getting an average of around 74 FPS, so hopefully we can go up to 1080. I'm not going to change anything else but that resolution there. we still got V-Sync on. And it's definitely trying its hardest to keep it locked right there at 60. I'm sure we'll get a few dips here and there, but uh, yeah, when it comes to the 7000 series powered mini PCs, this is some of the best performance that I've seen. And it's a little odd because this is using a U variant versus the HS variants and the other ones that we've tested, which, you know, do run at a higher wattage. Really, the only thing I can gather here is the power profiles that ASRock has programmed in the BIOS just work out a little better than some of the other ones that we've tested so far. Next on the list, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 at 900p using the Steam Deck preset. So this does enable FSR scaling. I believe it sets it to performance. But uh, we are up at 900p right now, and we're getting an average of around 71 FPS out of this game. As you can see, we're only pulling around 50 watts in total from this APU. CPU clocks could definitely be helped out by upping that wattage, but if you take a look at our GPU clocks, we're right there pegged at 2200 megahertz. I had to throw at least one fighting game in here, so I chose Injustice 2, one I kind of like to go to on these Ryzen APUs. We're at 1080p medium settings, running at 60. Another one that runs really well, even at high settings, is Street Fighter V. Or you could go with Mortal Kombat 11 at 1080p with a low medium mix. I've had really good luck with fighting games on these APUs, all the way from Ryzen 5000 series. Might have to lower the resolution to 900p on the 5000, but uh, with these 6000 and 7000 series APUs, 1080p is totally possible. Checking out Skyrim Special Edition, 1080p medium. I did have to drop this one down to medium. At high, we had some dips into the mid 50s, just given that distance scaling there. So medium is really where it's at, but you're going to get a really nice smooth 60 FPS out of this. And, uh, you know, we could actually unlock the frame rate here, but this game, in my opinion, does just feel a lot better locked up at 60. Here's GTA 5 at 1080p with a high normal mix. And uh, I can tell you right now that we could get more out of this game if we got more wattage to the CPU. You can see that those clocks are low. This really does rely on that CPU to get a better frame rate. But I'd say, you know, with an average of around 81 FPS at 1080p like this, it's totally playable. Mm -hmm. 
Doom Eternal, 1080p, medium settings. This always works out really well on these APUs. No render scaling whatsoever from the settings, and we're getting an average of around 68 FPS. I will admit, I have seen this perform a little better on the uh, 7735HS at a higher wattage, around 65, due to those lower CPU clocks, but it's still very playable. The Witcher 3 is another one that performs really well. We're at 1080p with a low medium mix. We did have to drop some of those settings down and we can get an average of around 65 FPS out of this game. Another thing I wanted to take a look at here was total system power consumption, and it's definitely lower than some of the other 7000 series mini PCs that we've taken a look at, mainly because this is using the U variant. At idle, pulling around 10 watts from the wall, average gaming jumps up to 62, and the maximum that I could get this to pull while maxing out the GPU and CPU at the same time was 79 watts. Now remember, we're also in performance mode. If you enable balanced mode from the BIOS, it's going to pull a lot less wattage, but you're not going to get the kind of performance that you saw in this video. So overall, when it comes to gaming, this is the best performing Ryzen 7000 series mini PC that we've taken a look at on the channel so far, but I'm sure we'll see better ones down the road. These things come out really quickly, but I do think that this is a decent little PC given what we have here. I know the look of it is a bit plain Jane, but it does perform quite well. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave links in the description, and if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. Another thing we could do a test on is that USB 4 up front with an eGPU, or even install Linux. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, but uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.